Hello my beautiful Cancers and welcome to your horoscope for March of 2020 where Cancer this month it's actually quite interesting because not only do we have Mercury coming out of retrograde which is just a good deal for everybody but Saturn is also going to move into the energy of Aquarius. Now in the general reading Cancer Saturn acts as your relationship and your romance planet and as he takes a trip and makes a move up here you're going to start to see things in relationships quite a bit differently than you have and you'll get a taste of that from May to July and then Saturn will be back as we come to December and then we'll roll with this energy and develop it over the next couple years so it's very very exciting not to mention March is the time where we come into the spring equinox unless of course you're one of our Cancerian friends who is on the um, southern hemisphere then you will be moving into your autumn Whatever you're moving into, we support you because it's time for a new season. I don't know about you guys, but I'm ready to shake it off a little and have a new experience. So let's jump in here, Cancer, and see what's going on on the cosmic weatherscape, okay? All right, so right at the beginning of the month, we have Mercury, who is still retrograde. He's retrograde up here in the energy of Pisces as we come to the beginning of the month. Now, he's going to continue that retrograde action and move back into the energy of Aquarius. This is going to light up your eighth house, okay? Now, the eighth house is all about joint resources, intimacy, sex. Um, spirituality lives up here, death, debt, fear, all of that is encompassed in this 8th house place here. But something to keep in mind while it's retrograde here is yes, you could be going back over debt. You could be going over your intimate relationships and getting some new thinking on them. But the fact is, is that you may also be doing a lot of conversing because when Mercury was here in the energy of Pisces, he's in fall, so he's not as equipped to be as vocal and as versatile. Pisces doesn't give him all the details that he wants. It's more of a vague energy, right? But as Mercury moves back here, even in retrograde style into the energy of Aquarius, he becomes hyper expressive, right? There's a lot to say, there's a lot to think about, there's a lot to do. Not to mention, Mercury has moved back into this eighth house and is going to ask you for your originality, right? Where, what makes you original in this area? What makes you a little bit odd but also also beautiful in this area. This is a lot of independence when we're looking at the Aquarian energy. A lot of what makes you you that you can then give back to the whole. So it'll be a beautiful energy. Let me know how you experience that down in the comment section, okay? Now Venus is also hitting the road and getting a new show. She's going to move out of this top energy of Aquarius or of Aries, excuse me, and into the energy of Venus where she is home, right? Venus is very much so at home, very comfortable in the energy of Taurus since she's a ruling energy there. Now that will light up your 11th house. The 11th house is about friends, groupings, social things, including your social media as well, your long-range plans and goals and ambitions for yourself. So you may also have this interesting balance of what's happening where you've got Mer or you've got Venus here in your 11th house of friends, but Mercury retrograde is over here in your 8th house where Aquarius is traditionally our friend ruling sign, right? So there could be a connection happening for you right here. And one of the things that I think of this month, Cancer, is are you letting go of a past friendship or a past romantic connection, right? Have you had this requited love and it's like, yeah, I can't hold on to this anymore. It's time to release. Has there been something painful that happened in a social group or a social way and you're like, I can't hold on to this anymore? This is, these are some really nice energies for therapy if that's something you need to do or something, something therapeutic for yourself. So keep that in mind that that could be a balance of what you're seeing. But Venus also is just very magnetic. She might want to bring you some friends, and they're the good friends, right? These are the kind of friends that are diplomatic. They want to bring something good into your life. This could be a romance coming into your life, of course. And the other thing I think of is that Venus does like some money. So maybe you're starting to be a little bit more in your social medias or doing something social that also produces a magnetism to you or a lot of attention. So whatever you light up here in your 11th house in this Taurus energy, it's probably going to be pretty solid, whatever those changes are, okay? 
On the 9th, we're going to have a full moon happening in the energy of Virgo. So it's going to light up your third house here. Now the third house is all about our thinking, our communications, the way I make decisions, my siblings, my neighbors. All of that lives down here in the third house, writing, right? Maybe you haven't published the book, but are you still writing it? Are you writing that journal? It's down here in the third house. And a full moon says that something needs to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted. We need to make a shift in what has already been here, right? So having this be your third house, this could be, um, certainly you're bringing something to culmination. Are you finishing writing that book? Are you finishing that website? Or are you making adjustments to some kind of writing project? Mercury is still retrograde, so I would tell you, if it is a contract or a document or some kind of paperwork that has already been on the table and you are re-looking at it, that's just fine. But if it is a brand new contract, brand new documentation, I would caution you, use your moon well, look at the adjustments that need to be made, but don't sign anything until Mercury comes out of retrograde. Now the third house being a house of communication, it could also be challenging you to say, how are you communicating? What are you communicating? What are you about? This is a wonderful energy for that as well, okay? On the 9th, we're going to have Mercury coming out of retrograde right over there in Aquarius, and now he's going to be stationing direct, okay? So if you can get to the 9th, then you can come back here and sign all the paperwork you want to. You can buy, you can sell that house, you can do whatever you need to, get a new car, right? But now Mercury's out of retrograde, so you have this release of forward motion. Now, just because Mercury's out of retrograde this day doesn't mean he is out there throwing confetti blessings for all of us. He needs a little bit to get his order bit regained so that he can give us the best of his blessings. So yes, it's out of retrograde. If you can give it just maybe a couple days to a week before you make big decisions, that's fine. But just know, trust your gut, trust your intuition, get extra eyes on something that you maybe need to, and you will be making some pretty clear mercury decisions, okay? Now on the 16th, not only is Mercury out of retrograde, but now he's going to resume his forward orbit and come back here into the energy of Pisces. Mercury in Pisces is in fall. Logic is not the best tool you've got at your fingertips here. You're gonna trust your intuition. You're gonna let something speak to you. And it's like, where did that come from? But in your head, it will make sense as well. It's this journey from the head to the heart about what's going on here in your ninth house. Travel, broadcasting, publishing, international business, speaking different languages, learning something, maybe a teacher or a guru comes into your life. Whatever is happening here, it's about your intuition. It's about clearing up the things that are very Piscean in your mind. Are you over there looming with self-pity? I didn't get my book finished and now I'm giving myself a hard time. No, unacceptable, right? You cannot stay in the self-pity. This could be an energy which between those two at the beginning of the month gave you a space to say give yourself some grace how do we clean it up and move forward but trust your intuition here trust 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 that intuition with mercury there okay on the 20th we've got the sun hitting the road and the sun is going to move into the energy of Aries and this welcomes in our spring or autumn depending on where you are equinox it is a new season it is a fresh season lit up by our cardinal energy of Aries by the Sun that is light heat life vitality motivation and movement right so you are ready to move as we come to this point in the month in your career or in what you do out in the world right for some people this is what I mean just to be clear on that for some people, this will be in your career zone, and this can be um, this can be that you, things are speeding up for you at work. It's in the energy of Aries. We're here to win, right? Like this is a go energy. So things could be speeding up at work. Certainly, you could see that it's the sun energy. So you could certainly see yourself getting a raise under that energy. Other things that can happen here is perhaps you have been dating, you've been involved, you've been engaged to someone, right? We had Mercury step back into the eighth house. And so what's happening now is you are motivated to change who you are in the world, right? As Saturn gets ready to step into this eighth house, you could decide to get married. You could decide to live together. You could decide that you're a couple. And that will change who you are in the outside world. You're no longer a single person. You're a married person, a coupled up person. So the 10th house can also just be about how 
how we see you out in the world. Have you gone from being an ordinary citizen, now you're stepping into something political? Were you just an employee, now you're a manager? Things like that. So think about that as you're considering these manifestations for your month, okay? On the 20th as well, we've got this really cool conjunction happening between Mars and Jupiter. And I want you to circle this day. Oh man, circle this on your calendar, you guys, because not only did our sun move with highly motivated energy into the cardinal, let's go forward energy of Aries. So we've got full move on, move forward, take those projects forward motion. But then as Mars and Jupiter come together in this conjunction, right there in your seventh house, it's in Capricorn energy, so it's grounded, it's practical, it will make sense, but the energy says go for it, go get it, be courageous, let's do this. So you see what I'm saying? You could find yourself deciding to get married and you change that outside here. You could find yourself a nice business partner and you're changing yourself up here. So whatever that looks like for you, just know that the 20th is the day to go get them. Go get them, okay? All right, the 21st, we see Saturn, who acts as your romance planner, planet, and also acts as our timekeeper, moving out of the energy of Capricorn and starting his journey for just a little bit, a little taste test in the energy of Aquarius. So this is gonna light up your eighth house. Now something to keep in mind, Saturn rules Capricorn, but in traditional astrology, he also rules Aquarius. So Saturn is not moving out of Capricorn and feeling like he's dying, right? He's as equally powerful and comfortable in Aquarius. But the difference is, when we are watching Saturn work in the energy of Capricorn, it's very concrete. We're seeing it in the material world. It feels very heavy. As Saturn is serious and keeping time in Aquarius, it's much more intellectual. So as he moves here into your eighth house, you're starting to conceptualize a new reality for yourself, a new long-range plan, a new long-range goal of what's happening here. You're getting things organized, even intellectually, technologically, for sure, for your future, right? It's making you get serious about your friends, about who you're grouping with, who you are intimately connected with. Cancer, if you've had weird relationship stuff going on, this Saturn is saying, look, we cannot travel alone. So we've got to be serious about who we're letting into our intimate space, what we're doing, who we're connecting with, what we're eating, even needs to be seriously, seriously considered here. So those will be things that you will take on. As well, Saturn, if you have debt, and debt can also be karmic debt, financial debt, relationship debt, wherever it is, it's saying we can't leave this hole. Let's get serious about filling it for our long range success, okay? All right, as we get to the 24th, we're gonna have a little birthday present for our Aries friends. We're gonna have a new moon happening up here in your 10th house. Now at the new moon, it's the darkest time of the moon cycle, so you're planting your seeds of intention in the dark. And it's like, okay, uh, this packet says they're green beans, so I hope they're green beans when they come out, right? But you don't know. You plant in the dark, truly. And this means you have to manifest some faith. Thank goodness you've got two of the most faithful energies in your ninth house of faith to help you say, all right, here's what I want in my career. I'm going to plant these seeds of intention for something to bloom out in this next four weeks, right? So at the new moon, plant those seeds of intention, do your rituals, do whatever it is that you do. But also keep in mind that in the energy of Aries, this is not a new moon where you're just planting and stepping back and thinking about it. This new moon says, look, if you want something different in your career, if you want to be known differently, you've got to be in action, right? Aries is an action energy. It's not a stop and think energy. It's an action energy. What are we doing in these relationship, finance, work areas to make sure that cancer is living their best life? That's what this new moon is pointing you to. So plant the seeds of intention for your best life up here or anything that needs to be corrected so that you can be living your best life, okay? All right, at the end of the month, we see Mars now hitting the road, coming over here into the energy of Aquarius, meeting up with Saturn. This is your eighth house still highly activated. Now we've got a sun that's in Aries that says, go, let's get him, right? And then we have the ruling um, Aries and Pluto energy that's Mars, and Mars wants to do stuff. He's ready to go. He's ready to be on it. So you're going to be expressing yourself pretty uniquely. What makes you you? 
right? Where do you have your financial ties with another person? Is this a beginning of a new financial tie with another person? It's a collaboration. Maybe there's a sponsorship here. Um, whatever it is, this energy is going to have you being quite serious about clearing out and taking action to be able to do so. Now, one more thing I want to point out to you as we travel this month before I leave this video. As Venus has come into the energy of Taurus, she's going to have a conjunction with Uranus right here, right? So this can bring an energy of like brilliance, right? It's, it's like it came out of nowhere. Uranus is completely surprising, um, bringing unique people, people out of nowhere, opportunities to give to humanity, be a part of a cause, um, gain new friendships or organizations, or maybe it's even just the most eccentric out of your box idea on the relationships that you will continue to participate in as the year goes forward. So I think it's going to be a very interesting month. There is plenty of opportunity through your planetary connections to have finances be good. I would pay just a little bit of attention to health this month if you can because it's not being entirely disturbed or it's not being helped or harmed, so you always just want to pay attention, right? I think career looks good. There may be an opportunity for some serious busyness. And relationships are certainly going to have your attention, but it's in a new way. So make space for what you want in your relationship life, okay? All right, Cancers, I love you so much, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye, everyone.